Hello everyone and welcome to KDH Art Class. Today we're going to do a project that falls under the category of kinetic art. Kinetic art is art that moves. Our art project is going to consist of a container in my case it was a large oatmeal container okay. you're going to need scissors I used a milk cap to create little circle stencils for, the, for part of my decoration I also cut up different geometric rectangular and square shapes to cover the top you're going to need glue to attach those with um, if you're going to trace around uh, something to draw with and then we're going to need some string with which to hang it with and you could either uh, put holes through it to tie it onto or you can tape it. You can even glue it on that just takes a little more patience. Alright, so let's get started. The first thing is I am using part of, as I told you, an oatmeal container. And I went ahead with my scissors and cut around and around and around and around to create what looks like this little spirally hot mess here all right. and I didn't go all the way I stopped it there uh, I'm a huge recycler I've used this you know, oatmeal container for many projects so I've already taken the bottom of my oatmeal container you do not need to. You can leave it there if you'd like. Uh, if you leave it there, I'd recommend covering it up. In fact, I would even recommend covering the inside to really have a nicely finished project. But that is your aesthetic choice. Uh, once it's hanging, the wind will be moving our artwork, whether it's air conditioning or outside or maybe you produce the wind by blowing on it and that is what's going to cause the spiral effect and the spinning effect which will turn our artwork into kinetic art which again is art that moves all right let's begin so i've already started so you don't have to see all of this of course i just took the top and i just started gluing on the different shapes. I pretty much kept it horizontal and vertical, but you are free to do it any way that you want. And then I got down here to the spiral part. Originally, I was going to let it stay the way it was and just do a few of these along the, the way. Then I thought about covering it all up with the bits and pieces of the paper, and that would have been really cute. Uh, but I ended up um, deciding to add these fun little colorful circles. And they just happen to be lining up in uh, such a way that you can kind of repeat themselves. So to do that, you will need construction paper. I like to cut it down a little bit so that it's easier to cut out. I also will stack them so that I can cut several circles at a time. That is going to depend on your um, child's muscle strength and ability or your strength and ability to stay on the lines. So I would recommend, you know, you can start out with one piece of paper when you're Per grade level so if you're in first grade one piece of paper or kindergarten one piece of paper when you start getting to second grade start uh, putting two pieces together together third grade three four or five that should give you a guideline of how many to start with okay. or if you've been doing it for a while 
however many you feel like you could handle. Now, when cutting, little bitty cuts, and especially if you're doing things like circles. Right? Little, little, and I'm always turning the paper. I'm really having to pinch kind of hard because I have several pieces of paper here. But I didn't want you to sit here and watch me cut each piece of paper out individually. I'm sure you have better things to do than watch me cut circles. Like, start cutting circles yourself. Alright, All right, so as I'm working along, I probably should only need two of these, but famous last words. I'm going to go ahead and use, cut out all three. I will use any leftover circles for other projects. Or I might have them just continue hanging down. Ooh, that could be fun too. Alright. Oh, I fell off my line, so I'm getting back on. Little cut, little cut. Again, if you're doing little cuts and you fall off the line, it's less noticeable when you back up and get back on it than if you did a big cut and you cut part of your shape off. It's really hard to fix that. <laughs> okay. So I cut my little pieces. Feel free to pause the video while you are doing these parts or if you're hopefully just kind of watching, getting an idea, and then going about it your own freeway. That would be wonderful too. Alright, the pattern I was following was uh, yellow, green, pink, blue, oh, I'm missing a red, red, baby blue, orange, Brown. Oh, there's my black one. I didn't even see it there. It blended in with my background. Okay, right, and then I will continue with that. Okay. Alright, when gluing, generally, I tell my students to take the piece they're going to add, put the glue on the edges, and then attach it. In this case, my art piece is skinnier than my circle. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to touch it and just kind of, if the glue doesn't come out on its own, I'm just going to barely squeeze and kind of rub and circle so it doesn't drip all over the place. Your glue should not be dripping. And put my piece in place and find a fun way of basically holding it for about 10 seconds. You can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or you could skip count. Oh, your math teachers would love that. It helps with multiplication. You start getting up there in second and third grade. Can you believe second grades are already working multiplication? You know. And you can do the two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay. You could even <laughs> practice a different language. Of course, the only one I know is Spanish, so uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Okay. You can have them count backwards. <laughs> You could list off all of your family members. Well, I need just a touch more glue on that one. It's really sticking out. And add my next one. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. 21, 24, 27, 30. Okay. Now, 
In this case, that's it. I started with these horizontal and vertical rectangles and squares to cover up the top. Just going for that kind of fun pop art style. Uh, pop art was the popular art. Uh, Andy Warhol was very well known for that. He was uh, Mr. Paint Soup's Soup Cans or just everyday objects. Uh, bright, fun, colorful colors. Also, um, Lichtenstein, you know, all those graphic novels, what we used to call comic books. Uh, you know, graphic novels are another form of pop art. Uh, Lichtenstein was very well known for using basically primary colors, very few colors, and uh, kind of filling in the spot with uh, polka dots and lines to give it, you know, shading and texture. But this project can be done in, with multiple themes. Uh, perhaps you're science-minded right now, and your teacher's asking you to do a science project, and your art teacher's asking you to do an art project. Well, you could do animals along the way. You could uh, come up with a label on the top or the habitat along the top and all the creatures in it. So if this was ocean, then you could have you know, pictures of seahorses and jellyfish, sharks, crabs, clams, the works. Going all the way down. Or you could do inspirational notes and messages. Right, and hang it outside the door. Thank you for helping or Thank you for all you do. Maybe it's one of those live, love, and laugh with families and friends. Talk about uh, friendship, forgiveness, all those things on there. Or you could do it as a little motivator in the morning. So this loaded up with sayings of, you know, you can do it. You know, I believe in you. Each family member could do a couple of these. You could just hang down here at the bottom one giant picture of an animal or... Ooh, imagine if we did the, the family tree, all the portraits. So as you're working along and decorating it and covering it up as you like, then it's up to you if you want to add more hanging down at the bottom or not. And right now this would be a beautiful little piece, but it's not hanging yet. So I have here three pieces of string. I'm going to put a knot at one end, and for most of you that you know my technique is to make a circle, then take all the ends and shoot them like a basketball going into a basketball goal, and then pushing the knot to the end, don't just pull, pushing it to where I want it, or as close to it as I can. And then giving it a nice little pull when it's in its spot. All right, from there I can take these three ends and I can make like a triangle of where they're going to attach. I can use tape. I could poke holes. This cardboard's a little thick, so I'm probably just going to be taping it on. Of course, the tape won't be as strong if I was planning on stronger wind forces. I would probably glue and then put the tape on top and make sure it's on there really well. 
Spin this. Add my second one. Set two of them on. And I just need one more. Stuff loves getting all tangled up. And there we go. I now have my kinetic art. It's getting all mixed up with everything I have around here. <laughs> to hang and watch twirl around just making me happy I hope you enjoy this fun little project be sure to go to KDH art class to get more ideas on art projects using found objects or minimal art supplies and have fun creating. Bye.